it's time to show you my three-axis slider upgrades. If you haven't already seen my previous two videos about making the pan tilt head and the slider, you should watch those videos first as this is a continuation of that project. The most important upgrade is that it's now gold, which everyone knows makes it one better than my previous silver version. It took about two days to print all the parts on my Ender 3 Pro. Whoops. I used yellow gold PLA with an 0.4mm nozzle and 30% infill for parts. I won't subject you to hours of printing footage, but you will have to watch shots of all the finished parts taken from my slider. And it's done. I'll start with the mechanical upgrades. The biggest and most obvious is the slider rail has been changed to 2040 V-slot extrusion. The 2020 extrusion was just too flexible and allowed the pan and tilt head to wobble too much. The legs have also been changed to fit the 2040 extrusion and are much stronger now, so there won't be much flex in them at all. I kept the belt clamping system the same though. The legs are also now secured by T-nuts and M3 bolts, just for that extra rigidity. The 3D printed PLA legs can slide on smooth surfaces, so I made them some silicon rubber sleeves to give them extra grip. These are only really necessary though when doing fast movements. The slider timing pulley has been changed from 20 teeth to 36 teeth, which will allow it to move faster except with less torque. I didn't really see this as an issue because it has plenty of torque, except when it's at an extreme incline or vertical, which was an issue with the smaller pulley anyway. It's also very easy to switch the pulleys back if I need to. Although the herringbone gears have very low backlash, I thought they could be improved further. So I reprinted the pinion gears, slightly larger, but in a flexible filament. This allows them to be in constant contact and thus have zero backlash. Being slightly flexible also adds a bit of natural damping to the system that helps get rid of any vibrations. Having the gears in constant contact like this isn't ideal and can cause excessive wear, but they're fairly slow moving anyway um, and easy and cheap to replace. So I really didn't see this as much of a drawback. The pan and tilt stepper motors have been switched from 40mm NEMA 17 motors to 23mm ones that are less than half the weight. The pan motor being thinner allows a bit more space for the camera to tilt upwards and obscures the screen less. Obviously these motors are weaker than the previous ones, but they were significantly over spec so this still works perfectly well. Being weaker can actually be a slight advantage in some senses because they'll skip steps easier if you end up running the camera into something and should be less likely to damage it. Another improvement I wanted to make was to the supports of the U-bracket mount. They didn't attach as rigidly as I wanted to the base, and the connection to the U-bracket could slide, which allowed for some unwanted movement. Both supports now secure to the pan mount with three bolts each, arranged in a triangle for stability. With the bolts to attach is thicker and more rigid, this also makes the supports a few millimetres taller, giving the camera a bit more clearance. To stop any parts sliding in or out on the U-bracket connection, I switched the bearings to flange bearings which we held captive by the flanges and the bolts through the supports. The tilt hall effect mount routes the wires internally down to where the stepper motor wires attach. The tilt motor support now has a hole for routing both the stepper and hall effect wires to the PCB. The PCB mounts to the bearing clamp rather than just sitting on top loosely. And the most significant routing change is to the slider stepper motor wires and the Hall Effect sensor off of the slider. That go up through the slider carriage and up through the center of the base of the pan tilt mount. This doesn't restrict the pan angle as much, allowing it to do a full 360 rotation in either direction. Obviously it can't continuously rotate still as wires will eventually twist too much and break or tangle. Now onto one of the most important upgrades, the step motor drivers. I switched out the A4988 drivers for TMC2208 drivers, which are just drop-in replacements. The drivers actually make a huge difference. They have 256 microsteps that are interpolated, which makes the motors rotate way more smoothly than 16 microsteps, which also makes them almost silent. This solved the resonant vibration issue, where the small vibrations from the motors at certain speeds would cause a much larger vibration in the camera and cause shaking in the footage. Another advantage of the interpolated microstepping is it allows me to drive motors much faster. This is because the Excel step library for the Arduino Nano 
can only support about 4,000 step pulses per second over all three motors, which significantly limits the maximum speed when the step drivers are set to 16 microsteps. Having the microsteps interpolated allows the drivers to be set in half step mode while still being smooth but requiring eight times less pulses to achieve the same speed. This means the limiting factor is no longer the software. Now the limiting factor is the inertia of the system and mechanical design. I think it can move fast enough for any of the shots I want to get, so I'm happy with it. There have been quite a few updates to the code as well as the physical design. A few of the pin assignment macros have been changed for the TMC drivers, so they're in the correct stepping modes. I've created a new branch on the GitHub repository for this version of the code with the correct pin assignments and other changes I've made. These were to remove the RGB LED indicator because it took up too much space in the program memory, which I needed to implement the acceleration profiles I added to the keyframe movements. When I started the code for this project, I decided to use the Excel step library, which doesn't support multiple synchronized acceleration and decelerations, so it only allows one motor to move at time with acceleration and deceleration. There's nowhere of these synchronous accelerations. If I do, that would be a future Isaac problem. It was. It was a future Isaac problem. By the time I got to the point where I wanted to apply acceleration controls to motors, I had already committed so much time to the code using this library that I didn't want to start again, so I botched together this solution. It does allow a bit of undershoot when changing direction, but this is the shooting video, which is an artistic application, so it doesn't really matter. Unlike with a 3D printer, where positional accuracy will be paramount. The movements will still be exactly the same each time, so the shots will be extremely repeatable. Having an axis be able to accelerate and decelerate is a massive benefit because it allows a much higher top speed, reduces any vibration and wobble when an axis is changing speed, and also gives a smoother, more natural looking shot. As I mentioned, the TMC drivers make the slider almost silent, as you can hear, or rather can't hear, in this demo. Unfortunately, it does make some sound when I move it quickly. However, I don't think I'll ever need to move this fast for any of the shots I intend to get. In my last video, I mentioned I wasn't able to use the audio from my previous version of the slider due to the vibrations and noise. But now with the upgrades and an external microphone, as you can hear, the audio is perfectly fine to use. As always, links to the CAD files and code are in the description down below. And if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching. And if you liked the video and want to see more of my projects, leave a like and subscribe. See you next time.